we have to be aware of more and more internationalization of uh, the conflict and it's going to become ever more difficult to control the process and its products. It is very clear that the other side is trying to offset Israel's relative advantage. We have a challenge, a challenge to our deterrence, to our ability to decide uh, or reach decisive victory with their ground-to-ground uh, -ground missiles and rockets and uh, our ability to use our Air Force uh, deterrence and uh, command uh, and anti-tank uh, capabilities which threaten our ability to maneuver. These processes are not new, however, they have become more complex now, and I think that we are very far from uh, that switch. We're talking about uh, the fire of ground-to-ground -ground rockets and missiles vis-a-vis -vis our capabilities. We're very far from a point of, of shifting the balance. However, it poses challenges of a different order to uh, our role before our um, military uh, conduct and, and capabilities. Now, as I've said, it is very difficult to identify uh, the uh, future of the trends, and it's very difficult to assess the feasibility as a positive product for Israel. Let me just enumerate a few points here. There is strategic um, meeting or encounter, and it was exposed on WikiLeaks as well, between Israel and Arab countries concerning the Iranian uh, issue, and there's a certain alliance here. And there is some positive ground there. Secondly, we have international uh, pressure on Iran. That's uh, something which is ongoing, the coalition led by the U.S., and it is energy. gathering some energy. Is this momentum going to be enough? Is it going to be on time? That we're not clear about. But there is a process here which I think has even surprised some of us. As of uh, Syria, there's a major question mark here. What does Syria want? Does it want the process or does it want results? Obviously, there's a certain arena here that we have to examine because if uh, Syria leaves the radical axis, that will mean a radical change in the Middle East. It is not obvious that this is possible. It is not so clear that they're willing to move ahead on this uh, or along these lines. But if this is possible, then this will constitute a dramatic change in the strategic balance which will have uh, many uh, outcomes and results. However, um, the Syrians uh, will find it uh, difficult to see where they're heading. And putting it in a state of dilemma is, is something that it's not only Israel wants to do, it's something much more pervasive. And one final thing concerning opportunities is the Palestinian side. It isn't clear, as I've said before, whether it is possible to move ahead. Obviously, there's a potential for partner here, which, uh, at least on the declarative level, this is the way it is. It has been uh, uh, presented, um, despite the split, that uh, terrorism and violence is not the leading uh, side of it or the leading aspect. And it's a question what we can do with that. As I've said, unless um, trends uh, change, Israel's strategic position is about to worsen. The order of priorities to us is first and foremost Iran, because this will uh, impact a very large portion of what is happening here. And when I'm, I'm speaking of uh, order of priorities, it's not necessarily for military action. Military action, if such can be taken, will be the last choice or the last resort. But Iran is certainly at the top of our priorities, and it will have a major impact on everything else that I have mentioned. Another thing is that uh, there is a linkage between the different points that I have uh, discussed and the different channels, and we have to deal with them in such a way that they will support the achievements we want to obtain concerning Iran, which is our top priority.